What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Manny Vids. Today, I want to jump into some of my favorite user settings for the Canon EOS RP. So let's just jump into it and take a look. So jumping into the first menu, which is the camera menu, setting the dial on the EOS RP to manual or to shutter or uh, aperture priority and taking a look at the first menu in the camera, we have image quality. So I'm gonna just start right here at image quality. Uh, I always set mine to RAW plus JPEG. Now, this seems a little ridiculous because uh, the EOS RP does not have a uh, dual memory card slot. It only has one memory card slot. The purpose of having RAW plus JPEG is actually just having a backup in case you lose the RAW files. But if we're using just one SD card, and sure enough, the SD card comes becomes corrupt. Uh, we're gonna lose both. We're not just gonna lose the JPEGs or the RAW. We're gonna lose everything. Um, but so with that said, why do I set it to this still? Because the Canon EOS RP, if you jump into the wireless communication settings and you take a look, it's under the wrench, under the wrenches, and it's in menu number five under wrenches. You have wireless communications, and you have Bluetooth function and Wi-Fi wi settings. Now, I'm not gonna jump into um, these whole settings right now. It's actually self-explanatory. So if you purchase this camera, this is really easy to set up. If you ever set up your cell phone and you connected it to a Wi-Fi network, this is just as easy as that. This is like airdropping for you iPhone users. Um, so it's really, really easy. Um, so what I do is if I'm doing a photo shoot, I set this Bluetooth Wi-Fi up and I just start shooting and all my JPEGs are automatically sent to my iPhone. Now my iPhone I have is an iPhone 7 with 256 gigabytes. So this is the phone I'll usually use on a photo shoot and that's plenty for JPEG because as most of you know, JPEGs are just really compressed files that come through the camera. So if we lose that SD card with those raw files, you can pretty much trust those Canon colors um, to really do its thing. And we're using a Digic 8 processor which is one of the best processors made by Canon so far, by far. You'll notice if you've been using this EOS RP that it's a lot better in low light. The noise reduction is so much better on the JPEGs. It's so much cleaner. The pictures really don't lose its sharpness. And I really, really enjoy that, okay? So let's just jump in now back to the camera menu and check out uh, go back to number the first menu cropping aspect ratio so this is the next one i'm going to talk about now just to let you guys know i'm not going to go through this entire menu there's so much there there's the there's the canon book the thick book that comes with this so if you really want to go into detail into these menu settings and some of them actually have info available in the settings itself to explain to you which each system is i'm just explaining my favorite settings um, that are important to me that i go through as soon as i unbox this and before i go on a photo shoot so the next one is cropping aspect ratio this is important now if you go in here this is where if you go into photo mode this is where you can set to full frame or 1.6 crop you see here you have other aspect ratios i'm not going to cover that right now i'm just going to focus on the full frame and 1.6 crop so you own third-party lenses a sigma lens like an 18 to 35 which is shooting me on right now in this Canon M50 uh, that I have. Uh, so let's say you want to attach it to the EOS RP to use it for photos. That's fine, you can do that. <laughs> What's gonna happen though, when you attach it, it's not automatically gonna go into crop mode. So you have to go into this menu, uh, number one, cropping aspect ratio, and just right here, click it on 1.6 times crop. Now you're ready to use that Sigma, that Tamron, uh, lens. Now notice I haven't mentioned Canon because what happens is when you use the adapter with Canon native lenses or uh, well not native to RF mount but native to EF mount uh, Canon lenses they would automatically go into this 1.6 crop so you won't even have to worry about that um, just with third-party lenses so keep that in mind. Um, I keep it on full frame for the most part because that's why I love to use with the EOS RP it is a full frame um, sensor and you really want that beautiful buttery uh, bulk. Uh, this is how you get it with a full frame lens uh, with, a, with a nice 1.8, you know, 2.8 aperture. Really, really nice. Um, another thing I want to mention is in movie mode. So we're talking about photo mode right now. So maybe some of you say, hey, well, it does do the crop. So who, who are these people who are saying it doesn't do it? They're talking about video. 
So if you go into video mode and you try to use that same uh, Sigma 18 to 35 or even Canon EF lenses uh, that are meant for you know the 80D, the 70D Mark II, they won't work in video mode. Uh, they won't shoot uh, full HD in video mode. So you can't, you won't have this available to you when you switch your camera over to that um, that menu setting, uh, which is you know the, the movie menu setting that's set up right you know right in here. So when you switch it over to that, you're definitely not going to have these same functions, these same menus. The menu is going to be completely different. As a matter of fact, uh, I'll show you that right now. So notice where the menu is at. It says cropping ratio. And if I go over to the movie dial, uh, there it is. We're in the movie dial now. Click here. Switch over. And now you see the menu number one, same thing. So we don't have that same crop thing available. Uh, but see here where it says 4K 24 frames a second. Basically, if you wanted to use a Sigma 18 to 35 or what have you again, uh, that is meant for crop censored uh, cameras, you have to shoot in 4K. Because what happens when you go into the 4K mode on the EOS, on the EOS RP is it automatically crops, right? 1.74 times. So therefore you're able to now use these in movie mode. Of course, you will not have access to dual pixel autofocus. It'll jump into a contrast focus. Um, which uh, isn't too bad if you know how to set up the camera and, and set up your surrounding. The contrast focus is actually pretty decent. Um, but of course, you can always manual focus, especially if you're doing a YouTube video like this. You, you know, you can set your depth of field, your, you can set your focus um, the way you like it. And just you have to stay within that wall or that depth of field, you know, in, in order not to get lost. But again, it's, it still works. Um, it's not the best. Um, a 4k of uh, uh, video mode but it, it's still usable um, definitely better than the m50 the m50 crops 2.65 times so it's it's a lot better because we're talking about an m50 which is already a crop sensor so it crops even lower than a um, micro four thirds so uh, this is definitely way better um, than that at least so it is a step up from the, Can uh, the canon m50 for sure uh, but again, you can use your video lenses in 4K, but unfortunately you cannot use those same crop uh, sensor uh, uh, lenses made for crop sensor cameras in, in uh, full HD. So hopefully Canon will, will get the message and, and will fix that issue. Um, uh, you know, I'm sure enough people complain Canon will do a firmware update. Right now, Canon actually has a firmware update coming out and we'll just talk about that briefly real soon. So let's just jump into the, my next menu setting. So let me just switch it real quick back into the camera and click that. And okay, so the next one uh, we can look at number one real quick is image review. Okay, so I never use image review. You can see from here on the menu, it's completely off. Uh, so what that is, is every time you take a photo, you can set it to how long you want. Two seconds, four seconds, eight seconds, or, or hold until you press the shutter button or, or that uh, play button on the back um, of, the, of the camera. So the uh, reason I keep this off at all times is because when I'm shooting, especially with the Canon RP, it has a small battery, so I don't want to waste too much time looking at every photo I take. I'm just gonna shoot, 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 shoot. And if I need to look back, again, you can just hit that play button like right on the back, you know, of, of your camera over here. And you can quickly um, just look at it, show your model or whoever is, uh, you're taking the photo of, show them, see if they like it, if they like it, cool, you know, and, and then you can switch to your Bluetooth wireless function and send it right to their phone which is another great way to use their wireless Bluetooth function on the Canon EOS RP. Uh, another way I love it, but yeah, I always leave this off. Okay, so let's go now and search for the next thing. Okay, so I'm skipping past these. See, I'm not gonna go through this whole menu again and like things like this, um, you know, lenses corrections and noise reducers, these are all applied to JPEGs. They don't necessarily apply to the raw photos. Uh, raw photos is just that raw. Those are the things you're going to look at in post and you're going to want to edit, you know, or, or may, you may not even want to touch it sometimes, you know? So the next thing I want to talk about is, let's see, not here. Menu four, you have your white balance, your custom white balance, which uh, Canon has a great auto white balance. As a matter of fact, I'm shooting this auto white balance 
And I don't know if I'm going to touch it up yet because I'm filming right now, but I'll, you know, I guess I'll just write something over here and post if it's color graded or, or just a little bit touch up. Um, but Canon's auto white balance is, is almost always on the money. So, and, and which is funny because I'm really a stickler for like auto white balance. I usually custom set all this and I'll bring out my grade card and set this all up. I didn't bother to do this. I just threw up the cameras today and just said, heck with it. Let's just go and shoot. I don't want to spend all this time doing this. I do not have a big studio. I'm actually in my living room right now uh, setting this all up. I live in New York City, so I have a small apartment. And so by no means do I have like my own private room on the side where I go and I shoot everything. This is all just uh, quickly staged and just for this uh, video. So yeah. So let's continue to look. Um, menu number five, HDR, uh, high ISO, focus bracketing. Uh, none of this I want to get into right now. Anti-flick shooter, interval timing, which is your um, time lapse. Uh, autofocus operation. So right now over here, I don't have a lens attached to my Canon EOS RP. So right now this uh, eye detection is going to be off but usually i have it set to eye detection and this is where the update for canon is coming so the great news is canon is bringing that that um great i uh aif uh autofocus uh to um the canon uh, eos rp and to the canon eos r um which basically right now my face is being tracked uh but it will track the eye so I don't know how good this is going to be because right now it does track the eye, but it doesn't track the eye as you move around. It doesn't really hold there. But Canon is currently bringing this in a firmware update next month, April. Uh, so I can't wait to test that out. I mean, I'm definitely going to have a video on that. Um, and so I really look forward to testing that out on, on, on the Canon EOS RP. And I really hope if this, if this really works, I mean, if this is as good as what Sony has released, uh, you know, um, or what Nikon is planning to to also release, or even the, the Fujifilm X-T3 has an amazing eye autofocus as well, so, you know, definitely uh, mention them. Um, but if this is as good as any of those, Canon is gonna start tearing up the competition, especially if they start up with updating their firmware, sort of like Fuji does. Fuji is really on top of giving their customers firmware updates that just make their camera new every single, you know, month. It's like a new camera. Oh my gosh, this new update just came out. You know, so unfortunately, we can't do firmware updates for bigger batteries or dual car slides, but we'll take what we can get as Canon users, right? Uh, so I'm looking at my next operation here. So touch to drag autofocus uh, setting right here. So basically, you go into here and you can enable disable. I highly encourage that you enable this. So this is their firm. The, so Canon, since Canon has come out with their mirrorless cameras, they've had this touch to drag autofocus on the Canon M50, on the R's. Um, and this is an amazing replacement for the back button joystick uh, that you would um, move around for the autofocus points. So you almost have end-to-end -end coverage of, of autofocus points. So wherever you drag your thumb when you set this, so mine's, if you look at the menu, it set active touch areas bottom right, because that's just naturally where the thumb is, right? And what's so amazing about this is that wherever you place your thumb on that screen, it, it, it like, it knows where you're aiming, you know, and, and, the, and the point will go just land right there. And it, it works so intelligently and it's so impressively quick. It, it's, it, I wish this was on every camera. I, I mean, take the joystick out and just leave this on every camera. I mean, if the GH5 had this, if X-T3 had this, and Nikon so forth and so on had this, I, it would be so impressive. I mean, this is one of the most impressive uh, updates to Canon uh, since they released their mirrorless line and uh, you know if you don't have a Canon if you haven't tried this yet uh, you won't know until you do and I highly encourage you to, to try this setting out see for yourself it, it, you're going to be impressed so for me I place mine in active touch area bottom right and so moving on um, this is getting a little long by the way so I don't know I'll tr probably try to post up timelines to talk each point I'm talking about, uh, just to make this video quicker for, for a lot of you guys who just want to cut through all this. Um, but yeah, I'm going to skip this uh, lens electronic uh, uh, manual focus. That is one of the most confusing ones, by the way, real quick, lens electronic manual focus. So it's like if you press the shutter button, 
and it'll go into auto focus mode you shoot and as soon as you let go and finish that shoot it'll jump back into manual focus very interesting uh, i've never used that feature before i don't understand why anyone would use that feature but uh, apparently there's a reason for it i just never used it anyway moving on so here you have your sound recording your digital uh, is your image stabilization which is actually really good especially if you set up this uh, this can't be if you have an rf lens that has built-in stabilization use digital digital stabilization i think it does crop in a little bit i'm not 100 sure i haven't really used it because i don't currently have any rf lenses with it i didn't purchase one when i purchased this so i do look forward to i'm saving up right now i want to purchase one of those one of the best rf lenses so i look forward to that but um yeah so the is the image stabilization is digital in this it is not uh mechanical so it does work it, i think it does crop in a little but it, you have to know how to use it like place it on the tripod if it's a windy day it'll help you know because sometimes if you don't have a good enough tripod you'll still get some shake in there and so you know that comes in handy so it, it works but for the most part i just keep this completely disabled yeah and excuse me i just i guess i got heartburn <laughs> uh, heartburn heartburn that's a new way of saying heartburn um uh so yeah uh sound recording okay so moving on um let's see here yeah i'm gonna completely jump through this menu right here um again i'm only i'm only touching again on on this, this stuff uh, you know quickly that i want to talk about uh format card of course always format card date time zone um hdm uh hdmi resolution auto um well, actually, that, that reminds me of something. I'm going to quickly jump in back to the video menu for a second to talk about something that really annoyed me about Canon. Can now, I, I know some of you are going to laugh like, well, yeah, you're not annoyed by the, the lack of 24 frames a second. The fact that you can't shoot uh, with a crop sensored uh, lens in, in HD, HDMI. OK, yes, I'm annoyed by those things, but something that annoyed something that i felt was like so tedious like so jacked up was when you go to um let me see if i can find it here so i'm just scrolling through the video most of it. so here we go hdmi display info is this what i'm looking for yeah the clean output right so you have clean 4k output clean full hd output this is hilarious though because i discovered this the hard way um i attached my monitor when i was filming at the time center this this uh, past weekend and I was like, what's going on? I have my monitor connected to this. I have the clean HDMI uh, output, but when I hit the record button, it's not working. It's not recording. What is going on? Um, I thought there was something seriously major. So I jumped back into the menus. I go to this figuring, well, maybe it's something between the monitor and the HDMI cable could be bad. No, if you read this, this has HDMI output without info display, movie recording and wireless communication not available literally you hook up the monitor to this and it will not allow you to use the record button to film that right there i felt was like you know a, a, a bitter ex-girlfriend <laughs> who wants to get back at you in the most annoying way that's what that's what that was like i'm like why would you do that canon why can i use why can i use the record button on my camera to with my monitor i mean that just makes no sense whatsoever what you know is, is that really going to stop someone from buying this camera's you know from buying an eos r uh, i'm not this camera but eos r is that going to cut into that uh, into the eos r sales I, I doubt it i mean it's it's like you cut so much out of this camera already it's it's like was this really going to be the thing like oh you know what i could deal without the 24 i could deal without you know the big battery or the dual card slot or so forth and so on you know but that you took away that clean hdmi you know i gotta get that eos on you know it's it, it just it, ne it, it doesn't make any sense you know I, I feel like there's plenty of reasons uh if people want an eos r they're going to get i don't think this is going to be the major thing that says oh well, i don't need the eos or who needs that all i and who needs those you know 10 bit 422 and all that i got clean you know hdmi out so i i felt like canon this is one of those things you really really need to update um and don't play yourselves you know love you guys but don't play yourselves um so 
Okay, so I guess right now, uh, why don't I go into some of my favorite uh, custom function settings. So when you go to the smaller camera uh, icon and go to the menu, you see where it says custom function operate operations and others. Click on there and now you see all these uh, functions you can switch up. Basically, this is where you will customize all your buttons, right? So I'm just gonna go in here real quick. And the first one is the shutter button. So what I did for shutter button is I take the shutter button and usually people have it set here, metering, autofocus, start, right? So when you half press it, it will meter and it will autofocus. And then when you full press, it'll capture exactly what it is you're viewing. So what I do is I set it to exposure lock. So AE is a, a you know, auto exposure lock. Um, now, what I'm doing is I'm setting it up for back button autofocusing. If you guys don't know what back button autofocusing, it's instead of using that the same button, you know, to half step press, you hear the beat, you know, go off and then um, shoot for your picture. What I do is where it says AF on or like autofocus on that, that button. Oops, let me get this closer to the camera. So there's a button right back here, right here where your thumb will lay AF on. And so that's the back button autofocus. So what ends up happening is I press that button, hold it down and that will keep my autofocus on my subject so I can just keep shooting away, right? I can even let it go as long as they don't move. As soon as they move, I can press it again and just keep firing away. I can, you know, just hold my finger down here and keep changing my focus back here. So back, back button autofocus, it's, it's still one of these habits I get into. And a matter of fact, uh, Tony North, uh, shout out to Tony Northrup and Chelsea. Uh, they did a great um, video on back button autofocus and why it's so uh, useful. Um, and, and so, so what I do is set the shutter button to auto exposure. And then if you go down here, AF on button, here's where I set that to metering auto focus. So there's where I set up the back button auto focus. Um, and you have a lot of other things you can choose from, of course, but this is my setup for back button. Now you don't have to set yours up. Like I set mine's up. Um, especially if you're not used to back button autofocus, but I love it. Uh, I would suggest if you're new to photography and you're just learning, uh, you just bought this camera, uh, go learn about that. I, I think it's, you will see how uh, amazingly more uh, useful it is when you set your, your settings to back button autofocus. Um, uh, ISO, I have my ISO set uh, to where it, the, it usually is supposed to be the, uh, export uh, the um, auto exposure lock. So basically you hold down that button and you, when you're holding down this button here, you're spinning the dial by the finger right here. And then you can change those uh, ISO settings. So I set that there. Um, so what I'm doing, cause I don't have, excuse me again, I don't have an RF uh, lens is uh, when you when you go into these menu settings you'll see it'll have the rf lens automatically set to where you have the iso at the ring of course you can change that to the aperture but right now since i don't have any rf lenses i set it so i can set the iso with that little button on the back press that down set the iso then when i let it go it becomes the, the, the wheel in the front by your finger your index finger becomes the uh, shutter so it's the shutter by itself hold on that button and then spin it and it's ISO. And then the wheel in the back is what I set to my aperture. So if you ever see me shooting, you'll see these, these thumb, the thumb and index finger working a lot. So I'm changing my aperture manual, I'm changing my shutter and then I'm holding this down, changing my ISO. So th that's where I do a lot of my settings. Uh, magnification is still magnification. Uh, no change there. You know, that's basically for video. I mean, don't really use that for photo unless I'm using a portrait um, or doing portrait. It's very still photography. Uh, as far as, okay, so let's look at some of this. So what about your auto white balance, right? So here I have my auto white balance, um, my autofocus points. So now we're looking at, oh, I should totally make this clear. Now we're looking at the movie recording uh, settings. 
So here I have my autofocus point um, set to the, if you look back here, so we have this uh, ring over here uh, or scroll over here. And so you go up, down, left, right. And I have these settings. So when you hit down in movie mode, it'll set it so that it is in, uh, so that the camera will go off. If you hit it uh, to its uh, right, uh, it'll give you the auto white balance. If you hit it to the left, um, it'll give you auto focus uh, settings. So you can change it from like facial autofocus to zone autofocus. So I use a lot of zone autofocus when I'm shooting on the weekends uh, in, uh, in the time center. If there's a, you know, a, a church uh, 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 or if it's a, 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 some kind of speech on stage, I use a lot of zone and I use my tripod, a uh, video tripod and I, and I pan so that the person's always in that zone or I can use my finger and just tap anywhere so that person stays within that zone. So I use that zone. So I like to switch between that and face autofocus. If I'm running up and down commanding like more than uh, uh, one camera, then I set it to facial autofocus um, so that I can know that the, the cameras are definitely capturing that person and tracking them. And so those are the settings for that. And I guess I'll end it there for now. I mean, this video has gone on a, a lot longer than it should have. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope this was helpful to, to anybody out there who bought their Canon EOS RP. I hope you guys are really enjoying the camera. I, I definitely am. I look forward to getting the EOS R and, and trying my hands on that as well um, for the four, for the 422 10-bit. Um, I even hear that there's a possibility that uh, Atomos has been working with Canon, just like Nikon, to bring um, raw capabilities to HDMI out. If that is true, I'm definitely getting my hands on this uh, EOS R. Um, and, you know, maybe you can make some stock footage. Uh, so, guys, thanks a lot for watching. This has been another Manny Vids episode. Uh, thanks for joining me. Please like, share, subscribe. Um, and hope to see you on the next one. Peace.